Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from doesbiz.com and today my guest is Prosper Teravinga. He is a search engine optimization expert by day and a digital marketer and online consultant by night. So what is search engine optimization or SEO? Well, it is the process of affecting the visibility of a website or a web page in a web search engine like Google's unpaid results. As an um, SEO expert, Prosper can help you reach your goals of being visible to prospects searching for your business or services. He works with clients to raise brand awareness, generate leads and find new customers. Through quick and straightforward changes to a website, he can dramatically improve the visibility of companies on search engines in any industry. So without further ado, um, hello Prosper, how are you today and thank you for joining me. Oh, so excited and humbled to be on your show today, Rose. How are you doing yourself? I'm very well. I'm very well. Um, firstly, I just wanted to um, touch base with you and um, could you just please explain to the uninitiated what SEO actually is? <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, there's always going to be the initiate, un, un, uninitiated. You know what? Because SEO is always a moving target and the algorithms are always changing. So by the time we finish this call, Maybe the algorithms have changed, but they don't change that quickly. So basically, let me try and really, really um, get down to the nitty gritty of what SEO is and then maybe go on to what it's not. Okay. So generally, when you have a website, which is what I think, and I'm assuming everybody on the call has one, um, it has to be found or people have to you know, find what it is that you do through your website and your website now becomes either the storefront or your office um, on the internet. Now, <clears throat> let's take, for example, um, you know, you are a, say, an accountant and um, somebody is out there looking for uh, an accountant to do their BAS or to do their GST or tax, all right? How are they finding you at this particular moment? All right. That's the question that you need to be asking yourself. A lot of people would say I do word of mouth or I do word or I do networking or I pass on my business cards or I already have a client base that I don't need to look for um, new customers. But there's always that one person who's never heard of you, who's, who doesn't know what you do, who you are and how best you can be able to serve them. Most of the time, these people take it upon themselves to look up on Google to see if there's somebody within their area that could help them. Now, this is what SEO becomes. It then becomes a way to systematically get your website found when people are searching for you. So just so that it's... Um, an easier, um, you know, um, um, analogy that I usually say. Um, I don't know if your audience can see the library behind mm -hmm. me, which is a vast amount of books. Okay. So Google and other search engines <clears throat> are just similar to a library. Okay? okay. And each website is a book within the shelf. So, as Google um, is the librarian that houses all these websites and the traffic areas that people are coming to to get and access information, Google has to have an understanding of what you do, who you are, and how you can best serve people so they can pass that book to the person who's looking for the content that you're searching for. So it is the onus is on us as business people to make sure that our websites are clearly labeled so that whoever is just passing by can read that that is a marketing book, that is an accounting book, and that is a social media book. So that's just basically uh, what we spend our days doing, Rose, um, besides telling robots that we are human. <laughs> That's a really good explanation, Prosper. Thank you for that. That's um, I've never heard it actually put that way. And um, for like the uninitiated, all this information that's out there on the web is quite um, well, not difficult to understand, but it's 
it's quite technical, I guess, in, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, so that was a really good explanation. I, that uh, really got me thinking about my own SEO for my own website. So um, getting into um, SEO, is it better to get an expert like yourself to do it or um, is it, can someone actually do it themselves and is it, um, which way is better, to get the expert or to do it yourself? Absolutely. So <clears throat> while we're at that topic, right, mm. it's always, you know, um, controversial depending on the person's financial and also business setup and circumstances, all right? SEO compose, comprises of two main things, which is optimization and authority. Most of these things we can do by ourselves. Now, optimization is literally making sure that the words that are on your website tell exactly the story of what it is that you do and people can actually understand that, okay? That's the part we can do all of that by ourselves. And the optimization is also um, generally and loosely around the content, all right, and context of what our website is about. So if you can articulate what it is that you do when somebody comes onto the website and then let them understand what you want them to do next, that is all to do with the on-page side, um, you know, of the SEO side, which we all can do. And I would assume everybody else with a website is maybe doing every single day to bring content to the people that they are uh, creating, um, you know, services for. Okay, how else are people going to know that you're an expert in what it is that you're doing? All right, so that's the first part of. Um, the SEO side of things. And then the second part is authority, right? Do you have the right to say you are who you are? So the right to say who you are comes from uh, maybe your expertise, right? Comes from the um, actual authority of you being, how long have you been in business for? And also the trustworthiness of your website. Now, this is measured with certain things behind the scenes, like um, some people have, you know, started to, to, to think it's a, bad, it's, a, it's a bad thing to talk about, but they're called links, all right? Mm. So little links that come from other reputable websites. You say backlinks. Definitely. Those are called backlinks. Yeah. Those backlinks are like little votes that are saying, telling Google that, yes, if there's 50 of us here, saying, um, you know, uh, connected to Rose uh, Dusby's website, that means Rose is a reputable person within the society yeah. because nobody else would want, um, you know, to have their name associated with your website if you were not a good person. Now, remember, we're talking to robots. So these robots do not know or care how we feel. You could be really good at what you do, but if nobody else on the internet world is vouching for you to say, you are good at what you do, then obviously the robots are not going to look at you favorably. Yeah. All right. So that aspect now, now requires some sort of expertise where you go back and you start exchanging these links based, um, you know, on, on your own credibility. You could get this by uh, blogging. When you write on somebody else's blog, your link now becomes a backlink on their website. Yeah. All right. And when you put your name in a directory, that link then becomes, um, you know, a backlink because the directory is a reputable site. Case in point, a lot of people and a lot of traffic trust the information that comes to that website. Yeah. But you have to be doing this consistently and systematically in a way that makes you look credible. Now, you could do this by yourself. But are you going to be actively making sure that you are growing your link portfolio? You are also connecting with other websites and all the stuff that happens behind the scenes to make sure that your business becomes profitable and enjoyable. All right. So half of the time that that is where an expert or a team of experts could come in handy because you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands full rows. You do understand that, you know, when your line of work is to talk to your customers, you can't be seen with a call face behind the scenes, you know, asking for links and all that stuff. Now, the systematic way 
that this is happening, Google looks at the trends of how and who you're connecting with and is that being reciprocated. So there's a whole lot of networking that goes on behind the scenes that makes your website credible, which yes, you can do it by yourself, but you wouldn't know the intricacies of what is actually working at that particular time and who is best suited to be a link um, given the circumstances and the scenarios of, you know, all the context of yep. what it is that you're doing. Yep. So you could do it, but are you doing enough to then guarantee that Google will look at you favorably um, in the light of the, you know, the, the, the yep. portfolio that you're creating. Yep. So there's a lot of work behind doing SEO. So really as a business owner, you'd be better off to, to employ the expert um, to do that for you because otherwise you don't have time to actually work um, on your business because you're, you're too busy trying to work out your SEO and how you're ranking in Google and all that sort of stuff. So that, that's what am I, I'm understanding what you're trying to say. Yes, yes, you absolutely are understanding um, what it is that I'm, I'm, I've been saying. And the one thing about SEO and where we are right now in life is Google lied to us. Oh, okay. Right? Google lied to us. So basically the lie that they perpetrated was every time you type into Google, whatever keywords you would have used, the information is actually coming from Google itself, but it's not. It is coming from our own websites. Okay. So for Google to maintain face and to maintain that charade, because they've started making money off of that, all right? They are gonna make sure that your website is representing them in the best light. Because for them, you are not the customer. The customer is the end user who consumes ads on the Google platform. Oh, okay. So Google ads is the thing. That's where, that's the, that's where they make their money. Oh. So, so for them to continuously gain that money from ads, they have to make sure that people are coming to them for information. Ah, okay. Absolutely. Right. So the more your website is making Google look good, guess what? It's inevitable that they would also make you look good in the SERPs. So that's why it constantly has to be a moving target because technology is shifting yeah. and, and the more your website is representing Google in the way that they would want that the end customer thinks, wow, Google is so good. I get all the information from here. Then it's inevitable that Google will then place your website higher up there so that people can find you and possibly do business with you. Okay, so, um, you know, putting Google aside, what about the other search engines like Bing and Yahoo? Are they in the same boat? Well, there's a hierarchy, just like with any industry. And the two main search engines so happen to be um, Google and Yahoo, uh, right? Yeah. But Bing is a contender, all right? is a contender in the way that they are now creating their own, um, um, they've already created their own uh, platform for people to search. So they just really want to make sure that um, people can find them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, any platform that we are on nowadays is now a search engine. We have put in so much content onto the internet that it has to be aggregated in such a way that people can find it at the tip of yep. their fingers all right and be that may the case the other really big search engine is um youtube yes I've, all right I've so covered that yes and google already has that market so you are better off working with google because they have a bigger market share in all of this yeah all right they've created tools products that makes it hard for you to leave the environment Chrome, Google Mail, all of those things are created by um, Google in and of itself. So that means there's a lot more people using those products. It's also then, you know, um, it makes sense for you to optimize your website for that platform. 
But if you've got the resources and the teams like what we then have, we make sure you are found across at least seven of these search engines. Okay. Makes sense. Now, getting off Google for a minute as well, what about Facebook? Do you SEO for Facebook? Like, is, is there a, a um, is that possible? Great stuff. So, obviously, search engine optimizing, like I said, every platform is now becoming a, um, you know, a searchable index. Yep. All right. When you create your content, all right, social media uses what a filing system called hashtags. All right. Hashtags are little definitive words that sort of makes sense of the content that we're looking for. All right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people say Facebook does not uh, readily like hashtags or it mm. looks like you're spamming as opposed to what Instagram is like. All right. But if you use that as a filing system for all your content, it makes it so easy for people to search for you when they come across that one hashtag and um, the algorithms will always, always file or group content based on, you know, uniformity. So if there's some sort of uniform way that you're putting your content out there, it will now make it easy for people to find that content and binge through or binge uh, connect with you. I find that um, pretty much when it comes to video, if you have a certain way of writing your video, um, you know, um, content, what, what are those? Yeah. yeah, if you have a way of writing that video content, uh, Facebook will then group all those pieces of content together to say, watch next. Yeah, yes. I've said that. Yes, absolutely. Right. So that could be a way of optimizing your content so that it's searchable and can be found in one um, small space. So I have, um, I have read that uh, Facebook is now uh, where they used to frown on um, people using hashtags. They're now promoting it um, to be in line with Instagram. Absolutely, because the companies merge mm. and they want to create a cross or seamless content, um, you know, passageway or throughway. Okay, so if, if you have already been accepting certain genre or certain types of content from Instagram and then you putting blockages when it comes to, um, you know, to Facebook, you're not creating that cross-platform synergy that they are hoping to create. Okay. In the future, they are hoping to make it into one very long social media platform, which just engages our attention and we never have to leave the <laughs> internet. Yeah, so they're trying to, um, what, what do you call it? Um, brainwash us. So, yeah. <laughs> How are we there already? Uh, phone, right? yeah i guess yeah we spend more time or you know with, with yours and my business yeah we spend more time online than we don't so mm. <laughs> anyway so what else is there um oh, don't know so i guess um we've gone through um an expert is better or an agency is better to do the seo because they have more time to do it um, rather than you doing it yourself i guess for the amateur who can't afford um an seo expert or agency um and i know you explained it a little bit um would you use in your like in your uh, words that you um uh, when you mm, doing your you know your post or your page or whatever and there's a place for there for you to put um a keyword would you through your website use the same keyword or would you um use a keyword that is um about the page that you're making great stuff okay so this is this is how we approach um seo especially from a web page um level each page is a representative of you in the search engine there. All right. So if you're about us, your homepage, um, your blog, and each blog also then becomes yet another angle or yet another salesperson for you out there. So each piece of content that you put out has to at least give you some sort of a return. 
All right. So each page that you're going to be putting out from your um, uh, complete website, if you would want that it is maximum, it, it representing you in the most, um, you know, in the maximum way possible, just make sure that the keywords that are on that page are unique but are also in conjunction with what is exactly on that page. Okay. So each service page that you have, which is what I actually advise people to do. I even have gone a little bit further. We've got about 12 services that we offer and each service, if it is not unique or if it's not the same, it's got its own website. The reason why we do that is so that we are very specific in what the website says we're doing and why anybody should care to stick around there for a very long time. So when people type in their keywords or whatever, all that Google robots do is scan through a sea of other websites and pick the ones that have those kind of keywords already and then group them. All that happens within three seconds. So if the, if the robots cannot go through your site and see exactly what you're saying, maybe it needs 10 or 15 touch points to be safe and doesn't see that on your website, automatically it moves and goes somewhere else. So you want to make sure that the keyword that is being represented by that page is at least present in quite a lot of other areas um, within that page. All right. So that you are not creating an, a situation where that page is deemed irrelevant just because these insufficient keywords or insufficient evidence to, um, to, to, to prove a case that this is exactly what it is that you're doing. Because remember, SEO is a zero sum game. All that is important is the first three, um, you know, first three listings that are on that page when somebody is searching very seldom do you find somebody going through to number four or number five yeah. or going through to the second page of, of Google? You know, they, their stories being told that, um, you know, <laughs> if you really want to hide a dead body, put it on the second page of Google or mm. any search because nobody goes there. No. And it's now true just simply based on the fact that we have a three second rule um, when we're searching for something. If it's not appealing or we're not seeing it, we, are, we think we've typed in wrong. And then we go in and re-correct our typing. Mm. So if you want to be found in, in that, you know, decision uh, phase of your customers looking for exactly what it is that they're searching for, make sure you've got long tail keywords. All right. Write the keywords in as much as the person speaks. This is very important. Back in the days we used to go uh, accountant uh, Melbourne or accountant, um, you know, Sydney. But these days, people are used to their phones so much, they actually think their phones understand them, all right? So the kind of keywords that people are writing in is, how do I calculate my GST, all right? That, that person is looking for maybe an accountant or information that you could have provided because people are coming to the internet to get information. Yeah. So the best way to really, really do this is start speaking the language that your customers speak. All right. Yep. So if I'm going to make a long tail out of this every single day, I walk well in quarantine, we don't do that anymore, but <laughs> outside my home, we've got a shopping center about maybe a block away. And just outside that shopping center, there's a dentist who's got a sign outside there that says new patients welcome. I need a dentist. Look at my teeth. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm going to need a dentist. This is not a pain yet, but I, I, I can see in the future, I might, you know, I'll make some money. I might just need to make that look a bit nicer. Yeah. Right now I might be considering that, but do I call myself a patient? Not so yet, that, not yeah. yet, because you haven't gone there. Great. So that dentist is losing mind share with me already because the person that he's looking for is not me, but I'm a potential mm. 
Okay. All right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So the, the language that I speak is, how can I fix my teeth? And that's normally how I type into Google. Yep, same as me. Yeah, I, I put the how, how do I do something or why is this, um, why, why isn't my plant growing or, you know? Yes. And then, and then that's the, the first three that you find is where you normally then find your yep. answers. Yeah. I, I used to know when Google first came out back in the day, because, you know, um, I used to like, go to page eight and page nine to find information. And I used to find quite good information, um, you know, in the, in the pages, I didn't like the stuff that was on the first page. So Google has changed a lot over the years with um, how they're presenting information. I mean, obviously they they've had time to grow up, I guess. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And they're, they're making enough money not to worry about making quick sales, but to really make a good experience. Yes. And I think that's what a good website is as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when people might be asking, um, Rose, how then do I know what my customers are talking about? Mm -hmm. Most of these questions are answered in your testimonials. All right. So your t testimonials might be, oh, Rose is very kind, very caring, um, you know, made this whole process easy and seamless, we would highly recommend her. So naturally you're already looking at, okay, they're not talking about the end product here. They're talking about the experience. Yes. How can I write the experience into my copy? How can I integrate the experience into, um, you know, the blogs that I put out there when people are searching for this kind of thing that my website shows up. Mm. You don't quite have the testimonials that you might want to use. You could go ahead and look at your competition's testimonials. What do they like about that website? What do they like about the service? What would they want more of? And then you just literally ingrain that into your copy and voila, you have started collaborating with the audience you're hoping to um, connect with because you're already spreading their language. Thank you for speaking Zimbabwean. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we're showing up to our clients every single day. They're all speaking a language that we don't understand. That's right. Mm. And our clients are just right there waiting. Okay, so getting uh, staying on that topic about language, and now this question has just escaped me because I got so um, taken aback by you know a second language that I didn't understand. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just broke your pattern there, didn't I? You did, you did, you did. <laughs> All right, so. Um, I think um yeah SEO so that yeah so we we've uh, it was about pages what were we talking about pages um SEO um language yes, oh um yeah something about um testimonials and pages and how do you find out what your um competition's doing if you are like a bit unique like my service Absolutely. Right. So the best part is if your service is unique, where are your customers right now and where will they go after they've left you? All right. So before they contact you, who are they talking to? Okay. So half of the time it could, nece it couldn't necessarily be um, the same line of work. Like right now, I would want to assume that the people that are going to engage with our services have gone through a BMW uh, a work, you know, workshop to get their car serviced, or they've gone through a Mercedes um, you know, workshop to get their um, car serviced. What else are they buying before and after they've worked with you? Those could also be um, you know, good uh, references because even if they're not in the mindset of buying what it is that you're offering, they're still buying something else. So what is it that they are also buying in conjunction 
all right? Because people like us do things like this, right? So who else is in, even if it's so different of a product, what are people saying? What are they happy about? Because when somebody takes the time to write a testimonial or a review, either they've been so pissed off or they are so excited. So yeah. it's, it's never in between unless if it's in between, they're just like, yeah, good service. You don't want those reviews. No. You want the high fives and you want the low ones. And then what you then find from those two, you, the, it, it is actually a really, really good business model because I'll give you a specific example when you will notice how a lot of people are leaving money on the table and this has got nothing to do with SEO or anything. We got engaged by an accounting firm that wanted more uh, leads to come through to them. And we asked them, in your accounting books, what sort of people have you um, been working with? And at the top of their head, they're like, oh yeah, businesses, small to medium businesses, tradies. Um, you know, they mentioned all the genres of businesses. And then I was like, okay, that is really good to know. But let's find out from your own testimonials what it is that people like about the service and how we can enhance that or infuse those words into your copy. And guess what we found there, Rose? We no. found that most of the people that were leaving reviews were teachers. Ah. All right. So there were teachers that had stayed with them for 20 years because the teacher knows they're going to be guaranteed of an income for that long. So it's inevitable that they're going to be wanting a tax return. So they just want an accountant who understands them. They don't have to go and plug into any accountant every single, every single year. And these teachers were referring themselves around, but the accounting firm was not looking at that because that was low hanging fruit. Mm. So can you imagine the, the copy that they were putting out there was to do with bass and GST and not, not yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so totally different, um, you know, um, appeal. To, and that's the reason why nobody was understanding them because the people that were attracting and the people that were coming to them are ex not the people that the website says they're working with. No. Okay. That makes heaps of sense. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so who, who has your customers right now? Where else are they buying and what else are they doing? Cause we are all here to have a happier existence. All right. So mm. look at the things that these people are, are the things that are keeping them up at night. It doesn't necessarily have to be your product, but what is it that they're saying and how are they connecting with these products that you can take on and make it your own? Because these are the same wallets. These are the same hearts. These are the same eyeballs. These are the same thumbs that are scrolling through past our content because it's not speaking to them. Hmm. Thanks. Heaps of sense. Okay. <laughs> Moving on now. <laughs> now you, um, your sort of tagline is have a business that's enjoyable and profitable. Now, and I've known you for uh, you know, a couple, two, three years now. And, um, I'd like you to explain what that is and how you came about getting it and how people can have a business that's enjoyable and profitable at the same time. Well, those, th that, that whole statement is what they call an oxymoron. It, it's, it's it is. Things that, <laughs> things that seem elusive for a lot of people, but once you get to that point, it's a really, really good place to be because if your business is making enough money that you never have to worry about money, yeah, then obviously it becomes enjoyable. You yeah. enjoy the customers you're working with. You enjoy the partners that you uh, deal with. You enjoy the work that you're putting out there into the world. See, you would know part of my story that when I came to Australia, I had nothing but a backpack mm. for and dreams all right and all i just really wanted was to connect with people that is what my actual 
my my that is what my actual talent is mm. all this is from reading and learning and everything else now i'm literally doing what i love doing you you are always helping me out in my community and it's it's a way of bringing information it's a way of bringing people together just so that they would know that hey we're on the same journey here you're not doing it by yourself so profitable is when you literally have enough to go by and you can still plow back because you are just so excited about the work that you're doing. You just want everybody to hear about it. I know. And look at, look at you now tutoring. Tell us a little bit about that prosper. Well, it, 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 it becomes inevitable when you have filled your cup first. Remember what opera says that fill your cup first or when they, when you're flying, you know, some of us will never have to experience that for a very long time, but when you're flying and then they say, in case of emergency, put your mask on first. <laughs> what I do every single day, Rose, is I make sure in the 24 hours that we have in a day, I carve out four of those to learn. So the more you learn, the more you expand your mind, the more everything starts making sense. And, and I can't wait to wake up every single morning and, and share that with people because I believe if I am, I'm learning much at a higher speed than whoever is listening right now. And if they're getting nuggets, multiply that by a hundred, because right now listening to myself speak is totally validating all the stuff that I've been learning and reading which makes it so exciting and, 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 and it's very selfish. It is a very selfish place to be, to give. You know why? No. Because right now we're going to give off of an hour of our day. Right? And this hour is, is, is recorded in, in, in time and space and everything else that comes along with it. The internet doesn't forget. No. All right? So we've given off of this hour. So that means this hour is going to be there forever. What about the hours prior to this? What about the hours we were talking, exchanging, and then and, and trying to figure out how we're going to make this um, show a reality today? Mm -hmm. All of that, that was just for us. We didn't give anything to anyone, and those hours are gone. But this, that we give. So can you imagine how many moments you can literally give and they're frozen in time. And that's the reason why when you came on my show, I think that was three or four years ago, we still have that video. Yes, we do. Yeah. And we both gave time, didn't we? We did. And I enjoyed it. That was heaps of fun. And <laughs> you've got that tutoring thing. I mean, I can't believe that you were offered that. That is amazing. Oh, you mean with the RMIT? Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you so much. And for me, that is, um, for me, that, that, that is just phenomenal. You know, it is. Um, even if I'm doing it for free or what, whichever way, but you cannot buy such publicity. No. no. <laughs> you know, and having my name associated with one of the biggest universities, especially in my field, mm. not a lot of people are going to know that I wasn't compensated for that, but I, I will take that. So at the end of the day, it's, it's all come from a space of the person that connected me to this whole thing. Very funny story. I met them four years ago while they were on their journey. Mm -hmm. And apparently they've been looking and watching at my stuff. Oh, okay. So even though I haven't, done anything for some somebody that would think but there was that person who was watching and their own way of paying me back was to put me on that platform so so you never know what it is that you're doing it's just no, also like i've heard mm. it, it's just like with my story with that um teacher yeah uh, i think you would know that channel nine thing she would have come to australia i mean to zimbabwe from australia just thinking that she's just you know a semester or summer break or whatever but she didn't know the influence that she was imparting mm. on the seed she was planting on what is now this 
Yeah. So that has now become my mantra. You just you never know who's watching. No, you know? I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I I've got um, opportunities just well, as you know recently. Yes. Um, because you just never know who's watching, and um, yeah, I, I oh, it's been quite a journey for me, and I've been quite. I've oh yeah, I've been a little bit overwhelmed by the attention. <laughs> well. Yeah. See, that's, that's the enjoyable side of things. Because when people look at a return, I'm just going back to the profitability and, and enjoyability, yep. all right? We look at profitability in terms of ROI, mm -hmm. in terms of the investment financially, right? What about the energy? What about the time what about the effort the mind space the heart space that we give into every single project that we ship out mm. who is measuring the return of investment on that well it's it's time it's it's um it's timeless and it's um and the word escapes me i know you can't put a price on it. It's priceless. Absolutely. So when, when I talk about profitability, for lack of a better term, I'm just talking about the little successories that yeah. you pick up on your way to success. Yeah. Because profit's those, not always about money. Profit is... Profit to me is, um, you know, bringing joy to somebody else. It profit because it, it it profits my heart. It, you can't you can't put a price to that. No, no. So yeah, that that, that really explains your your thing. Um, because um, I know that you write it quite often on well everything, and um, <laughs> you know, I just wanted you to explain that to people because people might think you're a bit, you know, I don't know. <laughs> vain or something oh, but absolutely. i know you're not i mean i know you're not i know you're not absolutely but yeah the profitability that i i refer to is just that return that you get the return on energy yes and the return of um you know feeling and the return of feeling yeah you know and and the what it, you know it feels nice to help somebody even if it, you're not being paid for it you know, quite often I do things for people and not paid f and, and don't get paid for it. And it did, but it still makes me feel really good. You know, it really warms my heart. You can't, you can't take that to the bank. No, definitely you cannot. All right. <laughs> and even if, if you take it to the bank, they're taking our money anyway. So, right. <laughs> but they can't take away the trust that you've created. No. They can't take away the brand essence. And all of those things can then later on translate into whatever monetary gain that could possibly come yep. your way. But once all those little profits are there, it's so enjoyable. Yes, it is. It certainly is. Okay, well, I think we might just um, finish up there. That was a, a pretty good ending to that. <laughs> now... <laughs> I just wanted to let our, um, our listeners know that if you wanted to um, get in touch with Prosper, he has a website at lifelongdigital.com.au and his community is Lifelong Digital Community, which I am so grateful to be a member of and, um, and he's at one of the admins to that group. So um, it's a great place to be at the community. Um, yeah, so can you just talk, talk to us a little bit about your uh, Live Long Digital Community Prosper, just to um, give people an idea about what it is and, and, and why they should join, because I think it's a great space. Absolutely. So I'm creating a space where real people, real businesses have real conversations as to what is actually happening. There's a lot of stuff fluff and drama um, in the social media space that has been created for us and half of the information that's on there is designed to make somebody reach out 
It's got nothing to do with us, all right? So I've created a, a, a space where, you know, business ideas can be created, business information can be gathered, and people can actually collaborate and create work that matters. Um, I'm, I'm building it slowly. I'm not in a rush to make it the, the, the biggest, better thing. I just really want that when somebody walks in there, they would literally notice the difference that they are in a different environment. And thank you so much, Rose, for your effort and contributing to the content and everything else that is um, in there. One day, somebody's going to come and knock on your house's door and say, hey, because of you, I haven't given up. And that's what I'm hoping we're creating mm. in and amongst the business community and the people that come and join this community. No, it is, it is a really great space. There's um, heaps of groups in there from nearly every capital city. Um, we're slowly building the, the membership up in each of those little groups and there's heaps of topics um, that you can follow and heaps of people you can follow. And it is a good space to be in because there are great topics, um, great conversations uh, and just, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just a wonderful space. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. And you've, um, and yeah, it was really great to uh, connect with you in there. Now, so as I said, with Pro Prosper, um, he's also got a blog page, but I won't go into all of those. But you can catch him on um, on link. Uh, are you on LinkedIn, Prosper? You're not. I am on LinkedIn. Yes. Yes, LinkedIn and Instagram. He's also uh, on Facebook. I know that for a fact. <laughs> 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 and he's got a blog. So, um, Prosper, thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, and uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. So uh, if you'd like to, some more information um, about the services that Prosper um, has, they, they will be in the links to the, the, the podcast and I'll put them in there. So until next time, thank you for your company and, um, and I'll talk to you again very soon and thank you prosper again for your time oh fantastic i really appreciate the honor today rose thank you